Okay, uh, what do you see? Do you see the board? Yeah, but it's uh, windowed. Yeah, well, I'm recording with Zoom. <laughs> so I have to well, it works. share the window. Yeah, it's not as nice. Oh, well. Um, so how's it going? You have a good break? Assuming we went anywhere to begin with. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see. So we first are going to go over the syllabus. So we can just um, I'll use my other computer. So if you go to uh, Blackboard, it should be there. Let me know if you have trouble um, accessing Blackboard. I guess I can go over here and share it with you. I didn't realize. All right, so you are in uh, physics 3331 thermal physics uh, lecture right now. So we're going to be meeting um, at 9 a.m. from 9 to 1020. Uh, we have a Microsoft Teams link that we can use. And uh, I guess the first order of things is to discuss whether uh, you know, and how many uh, people want to have uh, in-person um, lecture. Any ideas? I would have tried. You I would prefer it, given that my Wi-Fi is really bad quality and I prefer the beaters so I don't miss anything. Okay. So, let me see if you can... Professor? Yes. Can, can it be simultaneously? You know, like... Yes, definitely. I mean, I, it, it's, not, it's not one or the other, right? So if I go to, if we meet in the classroom, then I will be recording. Uh, so oh. there will be like no, no, no yeah. difference for you. Yeah, so it will be better that way, I think. Okay. So, let's see, can I, let's go this way. Um, can you raise your hand? Uh, over here, if you will consider going, you know, at let's say at least a third of the time. Awesome. So we have ten people. I think that's yeah, seems to be decided. So we're gonna do that. Um, 
let me just make sure that we do have uh, that room and that we have access to it. And uh, let me write it down. I will send you an email to confirm. So if everything goes well, um, next Monday or on Monday, uh, we can meet, uh, I think it's Education 202. So, you know, we should be um, socially distanced and everything. Uh, and hopefully, and this is what I really um, want, hopefully the room will have a, a chalkboard. <laughs> I'm tired of these tiny whiteboards. All right, awesome. So then this is, um, this has been decided. So prerequisites for this class, you know, just for your own information, uh, 2421. And for that, you need to have taken 2420. So that means that you need a, a year of uh, calculus-based physics. Uh, also, uh, calculus, multivariate, and differential equations. I know that most of you uh, have not taken a probability uh, or a discrete math class. So I will, I will try to introduce those concepts more or less formally throughout the course. Um, okay, another another show of hands. Can you tell me? Uh, can you raise your hand if you have taken quantum mechanics? Um, which one? Um, I guess it will be physics 43 something. Is it the first quantum or the? Yeah, first quantum. Oh, all right. Well, I can't raise my hand, but I'm trying to. <laughs> okay, so we have about of being a guest. Ah, one, two, three, four. I have about five people. So, you know, I think this class might actually be. Um, you know, the we're going to definitely use the concepts of uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, the most important one is that we have discrete uh, states as opposed to classical mechanics, right? In which everything is a, is a continuum. So uh, we will learn along the way. I think if you have taken quantum mechanics, uh, you might find the material a little bit uh, easier. Uh, the math is pretty different, you know, with the concepts. Um, but, you know, on the, on the positive side, um, when you take quantum mechanics, I think it's going to be considerably um, easier for you. So uh, you can click on this link over here. You can book me that me. I guess you can book that me uh, to make an appointment if you need to talk to me. Um, I still haven't decided uh, if I'm going to have um, like reviews for the homeworks. Probably not, but almost for sure I will have reviews for the for the exams. So, you know, I'm going to, um, I guess, check out um, check out our uh, schedules. The TA for this course is Daniela Ramirez. Um, you can contact her um, by email, and maybe I'll convince her to out office hours, you know, for the for the homework. So these are all the components of the class. So there are uh, in class exams, quote unquote. Actually, never mind. I should have gotten rid of the in class. Uh, they're just exams. So there's there's three of them. Um, I am going to give you one week 
to uh, to take them. So you know it's going to be available on a Sunday, and you have to take it by the following Sunday. There's going to be a time limit, probably two hours, but you can take it uh, at your at your leisure within that week. So it's a it's a take home exam. Sorry, I should have corrected that. And each of the exams is worth 20 points. So the worst score is going to be dropped you know, to, for a total of 40 points. There's going to be 14 problem sets. Each problem set is worth one point. There's going to be uh, literature discussions, 14 of them. And these are reading assignments. And you know, if you have taken my astrophysics class, uh, you have a pretty good idea uh, of how these are. So it's usually uh, like a review paper, you know, or a, a technical paper, um, but it's usually a, a review one. And there's, you know, it's relevant to what we're seeing in the course. And um, I have several questions and you, know, you can answer them. And I'm gonna go in a little bit, a bit more detail uh, regarding that. There's also a final. The final is worth 40 points and is uh, cumulative. And there is participation. So uh, 12 additional points. If you uh, lead or host a study session, you know, for, for exams or even for homeworks, you know, five points and two points for attending one of these sessions. And you know, if you attend my sessions, then you get those two points. So the total number of points is 120. Uh, this means that you know, there will be no curve. You need 90 points for the A. And if you are into dividing things and percentages, that's 75%, um, right? So really, you need a, a 75 uh, for the A. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a little bit more consistent to not have a curve, but you know, also not require a 90%. Um, you can see the distribution of grades last year, and you know, it was unique because uh, I guess we had all the COVID restrictions, but you know, almost 70% got an A and 20% got a B and uh, almost 10% got an S, that's satisfactory. So the idea, you know, in this class is that um, you will have to work pretty hard. You know, it's not, I'm not gonna lie, it's not gonna be super easy, but uh, your grade, you know, should be, should be pretty good. So in addition to the uh, regular way of getting an A or a B, um, which is adding all your points, you can look at uh, one of these three alternatives or all three. If you get a 90% on the final, you're gonna get an A in the class. If you get a 90% um, average on the three in-class exams, you get an A in the class. And the third alternative, if you get 12 points from the homework, which is close to an A, and 12 points from the discussions, then you will get an A in the class. Okay, so I guess typically people start, you know, just doing everything, and then, um, you know, the middle of the semester um, arrives, and everybody has a lot of stuff to do, and um, you know, the, the students start to specialize, so they pursue uh, one of these uh, four, four methods of getting the, 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 the A. And I think that's fine, you know? Um, if you prefer to, you know, let's say that you get nervous during the exams, you know, maybe it's easier for you to just focus on your homework and discussion, you know, and, and so on. If you already know all the material, you know, why waste your time, just get an A on the final. So it's, it's up to you. There are options and you know, everybody should get a, a good grade. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. 
So the book that we're going to be using is KK, Thermal Physics by Kittel and Cromer, second edition. It is, um, let's see, it's a little dated, uh, but I think that's because they got it right the first time. Yeah, so the copyright is uh, 1980. But it's a pretty good book. It says over there that it's one of my favorite ones. It's really good preparation for the physics GRE. Um, but it's a little terse and you know, sometimes it's not super easy to, to make the connections between all the stuff that it is saying. So, you know, that's my job to make those connections. There's another book that I like, and, you know, it's kind of the opposite of, of Kittel. Uh, this is one, Statistical and Thermal Physics by Gold and uh, Tavushnik, so GT. Uh, you can buy the textbook, but we're going to be using the, the notes that are for free. Um, on that website. So Kittel, you know, is kind of terse. Um, GT is very, it's, it's almost like a tutorial. You know, like um, it's, it's really verbose. Uh, it explains everything in detail. And it even has the problems uh, embedded in the text. So they're, they're not like, a separate thing. They are part of the of the text. So that's kind of interesting. And I like the, the problems um, that they have over there. So I'll be using those two. Now this book, I wish we could get it, but it's out of print. Um, Statistical Physics by Rife. This is volume five of the Berkeley Physics course. So I guess after the Sputnik, the Americans realized that uh, the Russians were kind of ahead of the game. So they developed these um, educational plan and, and books. So there's mechanics, you know, there's uh, ENM, and there's uh, statistical physics. And they started teaching these you know, out of these books uh, at Berkeley back in, I don't know, like the 60s, I guess. What I like about this book, about Rife, is that, mm, you know, it's definitely better than using like Sears and Szymanski or your sophomore uh, level physics course, uh, physics book. But it's not as terse as, as Kittel. Like it has, it has uh, I think, easier to follow explanations. So, you know, I might borrow some things from this book. Um, I somehow, you know, I, I have it since 2004. Um, I guess the, the other bad thing is that it's not in uh, SI units. But anyways, so as I mentioned, the lectures uh, will follow um, Kittel and Cromer. Hopefully we'll have uh, interesting diversions. I will upload my notes to Blackboard in case you find them useful. And the recorded lectures will also be uploaded to Blackboard. And it doesn't matter where we meet, the lecture will be recorded and um, I, will, I, I will make it available to everybody. Um, before I forget, Uh, was there a question here? To tell. Is this the book? Okay, cool. Um, Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I have a question. Um, is the like in-person lectures mandatory since they're still going to be recorded? No, it is not. 
okay, so we won't get, um, like, if I don't show up next week, I won't get, like, points taken off for, like, participation or lecture um, involvement? Definitely not. I'll never do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. You guys are college students. All right. Um, so, Professor? Yes. Uh, it's going to be the same, like, what you're doing right now, but in the class, right? Uh, yes. So you know, right now I'm just going over over the syllabus. Um, I I think it's just going to be like chalk and and blackboard um, in most of most of the classes, most of the lectures. Um, so I wanted to ask, how many of you are uh, pre med? Can you raise your hands? Again, I can't raise my hand, but I, <laughs> I, I'm in that group. Okay, I will mentally add one keep keep your hands raised so ian uh who else okay there's four people uh i guess i can see it over here mm -hmm. and joseph Okay, five. So out of like 28. Okay, so I wanted to know if I should have a lot of uh, papers, you know, articles that are um, more in that area, you know, like biophysics or um, I don't know, maybe even like medical physics. So okay, this is this is good to know. Um, all right, so as I mentioned, there will be 14 problem sets. Um, they'll be posted on Wednesday, so I'm going to post one today. And I'll do the following Wednesday before the end of the day, so 11.59 PM. Uh, late homework is not going to be accepted. You know, if you're late by one minute's fine, but if you're late by like a day, it's not fine. Um, about two thirds of the problems will be from uh, Kitel and the rest from GT. And I will come up with some of my own problems. Um, I'll post solutions to the, to the uh, problem sets after um, they're due. So I mentioned the uh, take home exams. There will be three with a two hour limit. The time limit is negotiable, you know, if you want three or infinite time, um, we can do that. Um, because the nature of the exam will change in that case. The exams will be posted on Blackboard, will be available for one week, and you can take the exam at any point during that week. And this is nice because um, you know, it gives us more time for, uh, for lecture. Mm. You will have uh, input on the exams. You, know, you can tell me what are your favorite subjects or maybe a problem that you really like. And you know, we can put a modified version of that on the exam. And the word score will be dropped, as I mentioned before. The material in the uh, take homes is not rigorously cumulative, but you know, it kind of is. So every week, starting on week two, that means on Monday, I will upload a technical or sometimes a pop science article about thermodynamics and applications of thermodynamics. So I'm going to have a list of, uh, of questions. You know, typically I have like eight to 10 questions. And this is going to be, you know, when I upload it to Blackboard, it's going to be a forum discussion. So the way I prefer that you do this is um, you read the paper, answer as many questions as you can. Maybe you're going to come up with your with your own questions. Um, then create a meeting on Teams, the, you know, what you're using right now, and meet with friends. So minimum of three people, maximum of five people. And you know, just discuss with them 
uh, the paper and your answers, your questions uh, for 30 minutes to an hour, and then record your, your conclusions. So, you know, maybe each of the, uh, the people in the meeting can take turns, um, you know, with the different questions, or maybe, um, you know, maybe if they had different opinions about a question, two people can share. Um, you know, it's just it's an, an informal discussion um, to be 10 to 20 minutes. You don't have to answer all the questions, but you know, if you answer most of them, that's, uh, that's nice. And I know that uh, you know, meeting with people sometimes is difficult, you know, people differ have different uh, schedules. If you cannot meet with your peers, then you know, just read the paper, and uh, post written answers in, in the forum to three of the questions. So you're gonna get one point for each uh, discussion, as long as it is meaningful. And I have uh, a definition of meaningful here. So you, pr you actively participated in the discussion. Um, and in order to do that, you must have read the paper and had opinions. Uh, if you are going to write in the forum, then, you know, I, I don't want something that you copy paste it. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I read stuff on the internet too much. It's very easy to, uh, to notice when someone when, when something is copy pasted. So, you know, not, not do that. And also do not post trivial things like, um, I don't know, um, the ocean is blue or something, you know, uh, that we all know. Okay, so any questions about this? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, I have a question about the homeworks. Uh -huh. Well, um, I know it's coming from the textbooks. Will you be posting the questions anyway from the textbooks? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I will. I will definitely do that. Uh, so participation, you already talked about it. If you want to hold um, student-led uh, review sessions, you know, maybe, I guess, depends on how things go uh, this year with vaccination and everything, you know, maybe you can meet in person. Um, collaboration is encouraged. Right, so discuss the problems in the homework, you know, the, the papers, discuss them with, uh, with your peers, with, with me, uh, with TAs, uh, that's, that's great. Um, you know, that's, that's the way of science. But when you turn in your work, it has to be yours. Okay, so do not just uh, copy from another person. Um, benefit from their, uh, from their opinions and insights but you know, at the end of the day, you sit down and you write down what you understand. So the final uh, will be available on Blackboard also. It will be four hours and it will be uh, cumulative. And it is due on May 17th. So you know, our class is not that big, so we can, uh, we can have the luxury of um, taking until the 17th, uh, which is a uh, Sunday. You are, of course, encouraged to submit before that. So here I have the schedule. Um, you know, the topics are mostly accurate. So uh, we're going to go over the first 10 chapters of Kitel. Um, and this is more or less you know, the, the division. So they're mostly divided by uh, the exams, right? So the first one is going to be due on February 21st, end of day. Uh, February 21st is a Sunday. Okay, you will have a whole week uh, to take it. You don't have to take it on Sunday. Uh, same thing with the second exam. It's also due on a Sunday. And the third one also due on a Sunday. So you're going to um, stay busy. So the first homework is doing a week. It's gonna be an easy one. 
Um, so Wednesdays, so homeworks are always due on Wednesdays, end of the day. Um, you will upload it to, to Blackboard, if at all possible. And if you don't hate us, uh, please upload uh, PDF files. Um, sometimes I get these pictures that are like 120 megabytes and I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so try to be mindful of that. And then I have here, you know, F1, F2, those are the, the forum uh, discussions. So those are due on Mondays. Okay, so there's forum discussion due on Monday, uh, homework due on Wednesday. Exams typically will be, well, when there is an exam, uh, they will be due on, on Sunday. If, um, well, I guess, since the worst score is, is dropped for the exam, there are no makeup exams. Uh, that being said, if something happens and you're gonna miss two exams uh, or more, then you know, definitely tell me about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to talk to you uh, if you need mentoring about research, careers, um, letters of recommendation. Um, I like to do that stuff, I work for you. So um, if you have a disability, uh, please contact CAS um, if you need accommodations. I have uh, two useful links over here. So the first one is um, essentially the equivalent of this class um, at Caltech. Uh, all the lectures are there and um, thought by John Presco. So it was really nice to, uh, this was a really nice find. You know, he's, uh, he's pretty good at explaining um, LSTA for this class a long time ago. So the classes are, well, I guess mostly because they're based on Qtel, they're similar. And I also have the, the link for the meeting that you are in right now. All right, um, questions, comments? No? Um, let's see, um, Alexis. Yeah, you got um, the statistical physics book by Rife, okay. Um, cool. <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to say that I didn't see that or something. But thank you, Alexis. Okay, um, let's have, uh, okay, so how do I do this? Okay, so now you see my board, right? Yep, a blank white board. Good, blank slate. Um, and that works. Can you see that? The circle, yes. Can you see? Um, I guess I had this problem in a, another class. Um, uh, what letter is this? Well, oh, I have horrible handwriting. Um, what is that letter? B. B. Or P. P. Okay, good. Like as a purple. Awesome. Um, and the other one, it was flipped. I guess it was a mirror image, and they didn't tell yeah, me until the end. Was that? Yes, I see it in my screen. Yes, yeah, see it, in in my it was a mirror image. Yeah, it's a mirror image. Oh, yes. man, that's bad. Sure. And you read a B, capital B. Capital B. That seems fine to me. 
Uh, say a uh, burrito. <laughs> it's inverted, yeah. It is inverted. Um, so if you guys have... Bottom screen on my side. It's not inverted for me. Guys, there are two screens for the professor. Just go to them to and see the other. Oh, yeah, go to the bottom screen and I'll yeah. flip it around. There are two, one for Zoom and one for Teams. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's fixed now. Awesome. I'm glad. Okay, so thermal physics. Um, it involves um, two main topics. So the first one is thermodynamics. The second one is statistical mechanics. This course is going to be more about um, statistical mechanics than than thermodynamics. Um, let me check something here. Um, Huh. How about that? Can you check the Zoom? Should be fixed now. I guess it was on my side. Yeah, yeah both screens are good. Awesome. Both are good Thank you. Um, so, you know, just uh, from what you know, uh, what is the difference between thermodynamics and statistical mechanics? Are they the same? So, of course, uh, go ahead. So, thermodynamics is when like the macroscopic behavior, like temperature and all of that, and statistical mechanics, like the micro. Yep, I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good uh, distinction. So according to Wikipedia, thermodynamics is the branch of physics that deals with heat, uh, work, and temperature. And the relationship to energy radiation, and matter. Um, its development started uh, you know, during the Industrial Revolution uh, from the need to improve the efficiency of steam engines. So you know, very applied, that's a nice um, nice story. So can we come up with some simple definitions uh, of these uh, six concepts? What is heat? Heat is the uh, kinetic energy of molecules. Mm, close. Can you elaborate? Uh, well, well, I guess that's not quite right. Yes, it's the transfer of of, of energy from uh, hot to cold, but it's based on the temperature of the molecules, which is then based on the kinetic energy. Right. So if you have, uh, you know, a, let's say a, a book, you know, something, something random. Um, if nothing is touching it, 
Does it have heat? I mean, heat is a process, so. So no? Okay. So heat is um, energy in transfer. Okay, so when you touch something, um, there's going to, to be a, well, unless you're exactly the same temperature, there's gonna be a, an exchange of heat, right? So energy in transfer um, with some caveats. So uh, it cannot be the, the energy exchange cannot be due to work uh, nor uh, mass exchange. Okay, so if you grab um, a balloon, you know, filled with air and you press on it, uh, you're going to do work right on, on the balloon. It's going to expand. That is not heat, even though there's an energy transfer. And um, you know, mass exchange will be, um, you know, you got, I don't know, something like a, a bullet, right? And it goes into a, um, uh, a piece of, of wood. Uh, there's going to be um, friction, you know, the, the bullet's going to be uh, pretty hot from the explosion. Um, so there's going to be an increase in the, in the heat, I mean, in the temperature. Um, initially, it's just due to the, the mass of the bullet, right? So that one is also um, not heat. That is also um, this mass exchange. Okay, so um, energy transfer. And um, I don't know who it was. Some of uh, one of you mentioned um, that it had a temperature. Can can you repeat that? Well, the, the the energy exchange or energy transfer with regard to temperature change from hot to cold. Mm -hmm. So. You know, in, in thermodynamics, we don't know anything about the microscopic processes. So how will you define temperature? Uh, average kinetic energy in an object. But you don't know that the particles have kinetic oh. energy. Yeah, so you know all of these definitions. What's that? Temperature doesn't have a, like a. It's not like a. Like something. How do you say? Like something fundamental that exists. It only exists when the part or the, because of the particles. That is correct. Uh, I will say that is correct. Um, I guess the the point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, imagine that. You're doing this kind of work in the you know, late 1700s and, and in the 1800s, and really, you know, it's it's very difficult to understand what temperature uh, is if you don't know that is, you know, uh, kinetic energy atoms uh, moving, right? So they didn't even believe in in atoms, and so they had these other theories that heat was some sort of fluid. Um, this is also why. Temperature is measured in in Kelvin or you know the, uh, Celsius or whatever um, instead of being measured in energy. So the the real unit or the the correct unit for temperature is uh, it's an energy. Uh, but you know for historical purposes, uh, it was easier to measure the temperature of an object than to understand what it was. All right, so you know heat. I think that's kind of okay. You know, a good example of heat will be 
uh, you're drinking coffee and you grab you know the uh, hot cup and so there's uh, an exchange um, of energy you know vibrations of the atoms from the cup to your hand so you know that one perhaps not too bad uh, work That one should be, yeah, that's, that one is easy. So this one is energy transferred. All right, so this one is in transfer, this one is transferred um, by a system to its surroundings, uh, which can uh, spontaneously exert macroscopic forces on its surroundings. So an example would be, uh, say a, a piston, right? So you have the explosion um, and it physically moves, it does work. Uh, so uh, integral of force uh, dot dx. Temperature, you know, if we don't know about atoms, um, you can just say that it is, you know, how hot or cold uh, the, the object is. Not much more than you can say, really. And here's another difficult one. What is the definition of energy? And you know, as physicists, uh, I'm sure that you have words. Something like the capacity to exert force or some kind of stimuli to environments. Mm hmm I think that's that's a good definition. But there are a few weird things about it. Mainly that it is conserved. Right? That's uh, it's kind of a strange thing if you think about it. Especially when you, you know, consider, um, you know, kinetic energy and all the different uh, potential energies, you know, gravitation, um, chemical bond, all of that stuff. It is a little uh, weird that it is conserved in the universe. So you do need energy in order to um, exert a, a force. What about radiation? Well, the easy one will be light, right? Or uh, photons. So perhaps you know, a definition will be that they have no mass. This is not quite complete. And there's like a, a gray area between mass and radiation because you know, like an alpha particle or a neutron, uh, they have a mass and they behave as radiation. And I guess if you go to quantum mechanics, you know, everything has a wavelength. So everything really is radiation. It just depends on the, on the degree, right? How much mass uh, it has. And matter, um, it's a substance that has mass and volume. Can you have a substance that has mass but no volume? Uh, 
I don't think so. What is the volume of uh, an electron? Yeah, but um, that does not imply that it doesn't have actually volume. Hey, maybe we don't know. They're too small or something? Yeah, maybe we just do it mathematically. And we see it has no volume, but what is reality actually? Perhaps. Um, so what about a, a photon? Does it have volume? It has to have no. Well, I mean, if we measure it, like we try to measure, we, we you know, does it become like a wavelength, something like that? We will see, you know, later in the in the course that uh, they have no no volume. They also have no mass, which is kind of interesting, right? And that's why they can um, travel at the speed of light. Um, you know, perhaps everything that you perceive as you know matter or radiation is just waves in a field, right? Anyways, we'll talk about that um, in more detail later. So um, according to Wikipedia, statistical mechanics, um, is a mathematical framework. Okay, so it doesn't say that it's uh, a physical theory, like for example, general gravitation or um, general relativity. It's, it's just that it's a mathematical framework that applies uh, statistical methods and probability theory to large uh, assembles of microscopic um, entities. So instead of assembles, I'm gonna write ensembles. Okay. So, if you grab, I don't know, a, a football or something, or maybe like a soccer ball and something more spherical, um, and you, know, you send it to space or you put it in orbit around the Earth, then classical mechanics you know, explains pretty well what's, what the orbit is going to be. If you look at the center of mass, um, so it is statistical mechanics that actually thinks uh, keeps all the uh, the molecules in place, you know, around that center of mass. You are not going to have crazy oscillations, you know, to the left or to the right, um, because on average they cancel out. So this is about the you know the the atoms really, the, the particles that make up um, the body, and. Uh, the part that I really like about the Wikipedia definition says it does not assume or postulate natural laws. Um, what does that really mean? Is that a surprise to you? You know, it's interesting because 
if you follow the development of classical mechanics, right? Um, it's essentially a bunch of smart dudes trying to describe mathematically um, you know, how objects interact. So gravitation, for example. If you look at quantum mechanics, uh, it's the same, right? They have these weird behavior if you make objects really tiny. So you, you find the rules that explain uh, their interactions, what, what they're doing. Uh, also in electromagnetism, right? You have a, um, you know, a magnetic field and you have to explain it somehow. So you come up uh, with a theory. And those are based on natural laws, right? They say, oh, there's a gravitational attraction is something that exists. Or um, you know, electromagnetic interaction. Uh, statistical mechanics doesn't assume um, any of that. So, you know, technically speaking, it's not it's not a physical theory. It's a it's a mathematical framework. And you know, one of my favorite books, uh, this one. It's called uh, Probability Theory, The Logic of Science. And this guy is essentially tries to um, explain how we do science, you know, with hypothesis, observations, uh, experiments, and try to put it on a rigorous mathematical background. And that rigorous mathematical background is uh, probability theory. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, into Bayesian probability, which I think is particularly um, appropriate for, for science. Um, in the introduction to Kittel and, and Cromer, so I guess this is page, uh, page one. <laughs> it says that they um, show the main lines of the logical structure you know, of, of uh, statistical thermodynamics. In this subject, all the physics comes from the logic. Okay, so you have some um, mathematical assumptions. There are there are a few assumptions, um, but from that you derive uh, macroscopic behavior you know, that you observe uh, in in reality. There's no like fudging parameters or anything. Uh, just uh, arises naturally. And um, I guess no thermal class will be complete if I didn't tell you, um, if I didn't quote Einstein. He said, a theory is the most impressive, the greater the simplicity of its premises, the more different kinds of things it relates, and the more extended its area of applicability. Thermo is the only physical theory of universal content, which I am convinced will never be overthrown. And as we will see in later in the semester, Einstein did a lot of work in thermodynamics. You know, he's obviously more famous for his work in, uh, for inventing or developing, discovering general relativity, but a lot of his work was in, in thermal. And so the assumptions are extremely simple. You're just counting states uh, in statistical thermal uh, statistical mechanics. Um, it is difficult to count states in most systems. And so the math can get complicated quickly, but conceptually you're just counting. You're just counting um, um, in which states a system can can be. And then he says, you know, so that's pretty simple. Um, the more different kinds of things it relates. So quantum mechanics essentially only applies to really, or it's only relevant when the the objects are very tiny. General relativity um, it's only relevant when the mass that you have is uh, huge. 
And so, um, you know, like if you have even a magnetic field or an electric field, you know, it also decays with the distance. So if you're really far away, um, it doesn't matter. But thermodynamics, because it is a mathematical framework, it has it applies everywhere, at every time scale, and at every length scale. So, if your theory predicts something that is against uh, this mathematical framework, your theory is very likely uh, incorrect. And uh, different things that relates and extensive area of applicability. Well, I guess those two are related. Okay, so thermo is based on three quantities. Temperature, which we discussed. So that's you know the average kinetic energy. of particles in a in a system in thermodynamic equilibrium okay so there is this concept over here, thermodynamic equilibrium. Um, any any idea on what that means? That means that um, I guess one of the consequences of thermodynamic equilibrium is that there is no heat flowing in. Uh, or out. Um, so if you put two things together, you wait until they reach thermodynamic equilibrium, right? In order for what we're going to be learning in this course to apply. So I guess a corollary is that temperature is not defined if the system is not in thermodynamic equilibrium. Because some particles over here are going to have, let's say that you just connected hot object to cold. Um, these particles are going to have uh, more kinetic energy. So um, the average is not going to be, well, it's going to be um, weighted. So you have to wait until all the particles in the block have the same average kinetic energy in order for temperature to be meaningful. But you know, for purposes of this course, it's just the average kinetic energy. You know, the big guy here is entropy. What is entropy? It's thrown around a lot. Uh, dispersion of energy. Yeah. Degree of dispersion of energy. So, um, you know, if, if this definition is correct, um, can you give me an example uh, of a similar system that has different dispersions of energy? Well, um, you know, I can think about, for example, something very simple, um, a photon coming from the sun. And, you know, all of the energy is, is localized. So its entropy is pretty low. 
but then you know you know comes to earth or whatever and it's going to interact with a lot of things but let's say it goes to uh, mercury and it hits a rock what's going to happen to that energy you know, if that photon is absorbed by the rock well it's going to be localized um, not in one spot but it's going to be um, shared by all the atoms of that rock. So even though energy is conserved, um, the energy is going to be uh, distributed among many more atoms than initially. That means that the entropy you know, after, um, after the rock has absorbed the photon, the entropy is higher. And you, know, you can uh, give your, your mind a hard time trying to think about processes, you know, any process in which an interaction, you know, such as the absorption of a photon, an interaction will not increase entropy. You know, and in fact, that is, um, I guess, one of the assumptions uh, but uh, without any counterexamples, that entropy always increases or stays the same, you know, if, if nothing is happening. So the third concept is free energy. What is free energy? What is the difference between energy and free energy? Well, free energy is the regular internal energy minus um, temperature times entropy. So you have probably heard the definition of free energy as the energy that is available to the system to do mechanical work. I think that's a pretty common one. Um, it is not all the energy that the system, let's say that you know, it's, a, it's a rock. Um, some of the energy is actually not usable because uh, it was dispersed by the entropy. And that dispersion, so the amount of energy that is trapped, you know, in, in, in uh, I guess in this dispersion is proportional to the temperature. So there's a fight between you know, energy and entropy in the universe. So if you learned in mechanics that objects want to minimize their energy, well, actually they want to minimize their free energy. So if they find a way to increase their entropy, uh, they will definitely do that. And that's why you know, gas expands, right? If you just leave it outside. It's not changing its internal energy, but it's maximizing its entropy. So these are the, uh, the three main characters uh, in our play. So this is how, this is how I uh, kind of see the universe. There's actual things, physical objects. Okay, so you can say this is matter and radiation. No need to make a distinction. You know, um, this is the stuff that exists. I guess that's how I will call it. Energy 
I don't know if you can say that it exists. You know, you cannot touch energy. So energy is more like a constraint. about how uh, matter and radiation um, interact, you know, with other, uh, with more matter or with other radiation. So the constraint is that this quantity, you know, whatever it is, Energy is conserved. If you go to you know, relativistic stuff, then it's um, the energy mass tensor. But for most things, it's just you know the energy. It's good enough. Um, I think this conservation of energy um, is physical. You know, I think there is something about our universe uh, that wants to, to conserve these. And it is a constant of integration, right? And um, it arises from the fact that the laws of physics are the same um, in the past and in the future. So it's, it's a symmetry of the universe. Um, and then there's this third thing which I will call uh, a, a consequence not a constraint just a consequence of the interaction of um, matter and radiation you know just like with the rock and the photon example and the consequence is that entropy increases you know or stays the same um, but it, it never decreases unless you do work. And if you do work, then the thing doing work increases the, its entropy by more than the entropy reduction. So this dude always increases. This is the number of states, you know, the, another definition of uh, entropy is the number of states that are available to the system. And we will start um, looking at that next time. So to me, you know, this seems to be uh, mathematical. Um, um, So, yes. Entropy is something that doesn't actually exist. It's like something mathematical. Like what? Energy? No, entropy. Entropy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's just. Does it really exist? Or? Well, it, this is kind of philosophical, right? You cannot touch it for sure, but we can see its effect in, in, every, in everything. Right? So um, if you just have this constraint that energy is conserved, then the, uh, you know, the, the laws of physics are, are symmetrical in time and space. Uh, well, in time, I guess the space will be momentum. But this means that you could travel to the past or to the future with no issues. But this one, the entropy increase is what produces the direction of time, right? Because it increases, you cannot go to a state that had less entropy. But, you know, I, I do think that this is a mathematical uh, consequence. And I think it's what uh, you know, Einstein uh, meant that 
it's, it's very uh, simple. It's just math and it encompasses uh, everything. So, you know, this tells you this combination, you know, thermodynamics, I guess, it can tell you a lot about the origin of the universe and the fate of the universe. So, and, you know, of course, it's a pretty important in our world, you know, uh, thermoelectric materials, uh, you know, energy conversion, you know, efficiencies, you know, for solar panels, all that stuff uh, is related to, to thermodynamics. So it is uh, my favorite, my favorite uh, branch of physics by far. All right, so I had a little bit more here. You know, I was going to talk about uh, probability and uh, a probability space, but I guess we can do that next time. Um, so I will up upload a homework you know, later today. It's gonna be easy. And I guess I'll see you on, on Monday. Any questions or anything else? Um, are these lectures recorded, will they be up uploaded into Blackboard? Correct. So I'm going to do that right after the, the, uh, the class ends. And you said the homework should do Wednesdays, correct? Correct. Sure. Somebody asked something on the, on the chat. Mm -hmm. Can you read it to me? Uh, they said, I have a question about thermodynamic equilibrium, but have no mic at the moment. If a system is not in thermodynamic equilibrium, that then it has no temperature, question mark. For instance, in your example of the hot and cold object touching, in the beginning or middle of the process of heat transfer, the system has no temperature, question mark. Yes, the temperature is not defined. So the definition of temperature is um, the average in thermodynamic equilibrium. Uh, so, you know, if you are, I guess this is just the, uh, the theory and the assumptions. And if you think about it carefully, um, you might reach the conclusion as I did that thermodynamic equilibrium you know, really never exists, right? Uh, a system is always interacting with something else. So um, this is the idealized case um, in which you say, oh, you know, all of the atoms have the same energy. Um, how close a system is to thermodynamic equilibrium? Uh, it's, a, it's a degree, right? It's not like a yes or no. And most things that we deal with in the world are very close to thermodynamic equilibrium. And just because our temperature is so gentle here, right, in, uh, on Earth. So you know, if you go to, uh, I don't know, close to a star or something like that, that you have a temperature of 10,000 Kelvin, and then you go to space and it's like you know, uh, 20 Kelvin or something, um, that's, uh, very out of equilibrium. Uh, it's called far from equilibrium uh, phenomenon. And those are important uh, as well. Uh, the, the theory for non-equilibrium thermodynamics is not nearly as developed as thermal, I mean, uh, equilibrium thermodynamics. Uh, so non-equilibrium thermodynamics is like a very active uh, area of research. Um, something that is non-equilibrium is, for example, most of your cells, you know, interacting with the environment to get um, oxygen, right? So that is a non-equilibrium phenomenon and that's much more difficult to, to describe. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interest in, in those topics. Did that answer the question? Okay, we will assume yes. All right, everybody, so um, 
sorry about the bugs should be better uh on monday and i will see some of you in um, education 202 okay okay see you, on thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor King. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.